what is up everybody welcome back as you can see i'm back at it with the project cb7 today and just as i had promised the last time we were working on it we're going to be working on some things inside the car and i'm about to show you what we got for you today Last time we had deloomed everything that belonged to the front portion of our body harness and I had stated that we were ready to move on to phase two of uh, doing our wire tuck. But I had also mentioned that before we even move on to phase two of the uh, wire tuck that we needed to figure out where we were going to put the fuse box and the ECU and stuff like that. And I had also stated before we even throw the body harness back in the car, which is also part of what's going to be phase two. Uh, that we needed to change some things inside the uh, inside the uh, the body of the car, and uh, let me show you guys what I got going on so far. All right, so I think I believe we decided we're just going to leave the ECU. It's going to be in its factory spot. You know, we're not going to move anything from the driver's side. We're just going to hide everything that runs up to the uh, windshield wipers and the uh, front pigtail all the way out to the headlights and the brake uh, the, the brake fluid reservoir uh, low signal wires we'll get all those ran out but everything else is going to stay over there just like factory to start off with our uh, wire tuck we did finally figure out where we were going to locate our fuse box and we had decided we're going to move it all the way back here to the back of the car in the trunk behind the passenger seat so last night I had started figuring out, figuring out a way that we were going to mount it in, which I'm going to be making a few brackets. I started making one bracket last night, but to start it off, I was able to drill one hole right here, and I made my own little extension bolt with a nut on the back side to hold it up there. And then for this portion down here on that tab, I made myself a little L bracket. And this one's put it more a uh, slight angle because the fuse box uh, tab is not at a 90 degree angle. But we're gonna end up taking this bracket and drilling two holes right here to bolt this bracket in back here, which will then hold the fuse box just like so and after I get those two holes drilled out and uh, this bracket installed I'll then only need to make one more bracket to uh, go from here to hang down to the top tab down here so right now I'm gonna finish up getting the uh, other brackets and everything made up to get this fuse box uh, completely uh, mounted up in here before we move on to what I'm actually going to be doing inside the car with you guys today. We're well, not the prettiest of brackets, but that turned out pretty good, in my opinion. I'm really happy with it. It's on there nice and solid. As long as none of the plastic ear tabs break off of this fuse box, we'll be good. It's going to work out perfect. We've got the batteries going to be going in the trunk. So we'll be able to run the power wire from the battery down through under the deck and into the side of the fuse box and then we'll be able to take the one for the alternator coming out and we'll be able to run that one along the body of the car and out to the front and then where everything plugs up into the back of the fuse box we'll be able to run it just straight along the side here back down the uh, panel and then along the body line to the front of the car. But now, to get onto the main portion of what I'm going to be starting on doing inside the car, I'm going to go ahead and just explain what we got going on. I'm going to start off with what I see as going to be 
the biggest problem with trying to convert the whole interior to the 92-93 is going to be the seat belts because this car the 90-91 has the horrendous electric seat track belt it runs along the door this whole entire B pillar on the inside of the car is skin completely different than the 92-93s. Here's a B pillar from the 92-93 where the bottom portion of the seat belt is going to bolt in and then just below it here on another part of the unibody is where the 17mm uh, bolt bolts in. This area of the panel you can see it's kind of got its own little channel you know to help guide the seat belt up in there and then obviously the uh, slider bracket for the uh, top tree of the seat belt is completely different so to start it off we're going to end up having to reskin the inside b pillars which that's not going to be a fun task I mean, i'm not going to i don't think i'm going to be able to reskin the whole entire thing just due to the fact that we've got you know one layer of metal here above this layer of metal laid behind this portion of the pillar structure and this is the one that i'm going to need to change out which also when you go towards the roof ah, lighting is so horrible it also does the same thing it runs underneath two different um yeah the lighting in here is horrible but it runs into two different areas where the uh, roof lays over on top of it so what I'm going to end up having to do is first we'll pull all the uh, all the door moldings off and you'll see that we'll have tack welds all up and down the pillar that we're going to need to drill off the first layer of the tack welds and then initially you would take everything off layer by layer but I'm going to just replace just this portion of our skin and then when it comes to where we need to bolt the bottom portion of our seat belt area I'll, I'll end up cutting anything that I need to cut to make the proper room for the, uh, for the seat belt and then down here I'll end up welding a bar across with a nut welded to it to be able to bolt in the bottom bolt that belongs to the uh, seat belt but uh in order for me to uh, do what I'm going to do, I'm going to end up just taking the saw and cutting just this outer layer right at the skin where it layers over into the other one. I'll uh, cut it across right here. Same thing at the lowest one on the top. I'll cut it across here. We'll drill out all the tack welds. I'll remove this portion of the skin. I'll do the same thing for the replacement piece, which we're going to be replacing just from here and up. I will be able to tack weld everything all up into place this way and then where I ended up cutting it down here I'll be able to just seam weld it or stitch weld it whichever it's called back together at the bottom and at the top so you can tell I've got a lot of work ahead of me to be able to get the skins off of both of these sides and the skins off of the one that we're going to have to change them off to. So I'm going to get out the uh, hammer and the punch and mark up every uh, tack weld that we're going to have to drill off and we'll go from there. All right, all these tack welds are going to be kind of a nightmare trying to uh, drill off. So I figured out kind of like an easier little alternative for me to do, which was I pulled out my Dremel and I've got a whole kit full of grinder discs and I'm able to just slowly grind away the little tack welds one tack at a time I already got this one done Let's see if I can get you in a good angle there you go see I got this one already done and then I use a chisel I stuck a chisel in between it with the hammer and I got that little piece separated so I'm going to do that to every tack weld along all the way until I get up the top and then all the way down along the back side of that one. 
I'll also have to do the same side to that pillar, but I'm going to be working only on one pillar at a time. And then once I, uh, once I get to that point, after I get all those tack welds done and most of this ready to separate, then uh, we'll pull out the uh, grinder with the uh, cutoff wheel and the hacksaw and a sawzaw and see how we're going to end up cutting the uh, two bottom portions and separating the whole skin from the uh, panel. Then I was able to finish getting all the tack welds that I needed to get on the front side of the pillar and have that separated. Now I can move on to the back side of the pillar and get those separated. And then I'll make my two cuts, my one cut across here and my other two cuts down here across this section. So I'm gonna work on getting the rest of this pillar de-skinned and cut out. Then I will do the same thing to the replacement one that we're gonna to need to put up in here. And yeah, then we'll go from there. Well, you guys keep asking who this mystery girl is. There she is, she's finally out here. Finally. Not being, not being can't completely camera shy this day. Last night, we sat down at the computer and she picked out herself a real kick-ass color that she's gonna end up painting her engine bay. So while I'm inside the car working on grinding off all the tack welds to get this B pillar done up, she's over here breaking out the uh, sandpaper and she's getting the engine bay prepped and ready for us to get it primered and when her paint gets here then we're gonna lay some paint so all right so i spent pretty much all day today and at least half of my night last night drilling out and grinding off all the tack welds to this b pillar and finally i have this one removed got the replacement one over here i still need to drill this one off and peel that one off Get it all cleaned up and ready to get welded up inside here. I'm gonna check on how much progress she's been making over here. She's really kicking some ass on getting this engine bay all sanded down and ready to get primered up in the next week. That way, when we get our paint, she's a really awesome color, kick ass color. Can't wait to get that paint color laid down into this engine bay. It's really gonna start to come together after we get this engine bay done. And these B pillars done, then we'll be able to actually throw the wire harness in, get the tuck actually going, and get this car put back together. All right, so before I started drilling or doing any cutting onto what's gonna be the new B pillar skin, I laid the, uh, the old B pillar skin on top of what's gonna be the new one to make sure that all my cuts were gonna line up and everything where I needed to uh, make my cuts. And come to find out, when I line everything up, this cut's gonna be the proper spot where I'm gonna need to cut it to the top, which is fine. But then down here towards the bottom, if you notice on my 1990, lined up to the 92, this piece on the 92 is a little bit taller than the uh, 9091. So what I'm gonna end up having to do, instead of cutting this a little bit longer than I than I want, what I'm gonna end up doing is just finish drilling off all the rest of the tack welds on this piece so I can get this whole entire piece of the skin. And then inside the car, I'll just have to, on both sides here and here, I'll have to grind down this weld, this weld, and drill out a few more tack welds to peel this back to get the rest of the uh, original B pillar skin out of there. And then I can slip the new one inside there with, with the whole entire piece of the skin and have it match up here to the top where I'll need to lay my weld straight across the top. And then after that, I'm only gonna need to kind of make a little groove here up in the top of the final skin for the roof so I can weld in another nut that's going to belong for the uh, adjustable seat belt uh, thing. <laughs> Alright, check it out guys. We have the replacement skin off of the old pillar and I've got the pieces removed from 
the old skin behind this top layer that we're going to have to put, put it behind. I am still going to have to trim out a little bit of the box area right here for the uh, seat belt box that's going to be going in here. But uh, one issue with trying to get this whole entire piece, it doesn't want to really naturally just slide right in because of the shape that it is. Unless I drill out more tack welds and really peel this thing like super far back, which I'm at this point sick and tired of uh, cutting and drilling. Or at this point, I'm really sick and tired of uh, drilling out all these tack welds. So what I'm going to end up doing, once I put the skin matched up here to the top, you can see how, you can see how far down the skin would actually sit behind this first layer. So, so what I'm going to end up doing after I trim everything out that I need to trim out over here, I'm going to, on the replacement skin, I'm just going to cut it. You know, this little extra bit off of it, I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch lower to go behind the top layered skin for the uh, door jam. And uh, it should fit nice and snug up in there at that point. Then I'll be able to make sure that everything lines up how I'm going to need it to line up. Figure out where all the tack welds are going to go, get it all cleaned and ready to be welded up in there. And after that's done, I'll have to shave out a little bit up here to drill a hole right here to weld in a nut for the uh, rest of the seat belt slider so i'm going to get to working on trimming out the rest of this piece and making sure that it fits in there the way i need to get it to fit and uh then we'll show you the final product once it's ready to uh, be tack welded on all right so i spent a few hours over the last like week week and a half each day uh, getting this pillar completely drilled off on uh, the replacement skin, the one on the car, as I've already just shown you guys, that uh, I practically had it all ready to go and I needed to just clean all the paint and everything off of it. So I've got everything all ready, uh, cleaned up to the best that I'm going to be able to get this thing cleaned up. At least I think it's cleaned up good enough. And uh, let me show you guys what I got going on in here. As I have everything pretty much mocked up in place. I got my box cut open down here in the bottom. Down here, it's gonna match up fairly, it looks like it matches up fairly decently where I've got it clamped together right now. Uh, down here in the corner of this box, I may still need to trim a little bit out from right here, but uh, I'm not really too worried about that at the moment. Uh, I've got it all mocked up in here. It looks like it's gonna work and it's gonna be good. But before I uh, start laying any welds up in here, I'm going to bolt the uh, seatbelt slider on to the one bolt hole that I do have here and uh, take the uh, A-pillar cover and uh, make sure that everything uh, matches and lines up where I need it to be before I uh, go ahead and start getting this thing uh, welded up in here. Then we'll uh, tackle what's going on down here and get this side all completely finished up. Now we got the uh, pillar covers on, along with the, uh, what's going to be the uh, top tree of the sweet seat belt thing, you know, seat belt slider. It's not 100%, uh, perfectly centered. I can't move it back any further because the uh, door skin's already right at the edge. So either way, that's where it's going to be and it's gonna work out great all right so the uh, pillars all welded in nice and solid let me show you guys something though real quick is that welder right there that i have that thing's pretty much as old as i am it's uh from 1982 so uh, that thing a lot of the times it's real picky sometimes on whether it wants to weld nice or whether it'll weld like crap tonight it didn't seem to be too bad but a lot of these uh, tack welds that I got here they're a little bit thick so we will have to 
pull out the grinder and clean those up a little bit but uh she's on there uh she's on there pretty good so once we get the uh, welds all cleaned up I can then shave out the piece that I need to right here I'll uh, bolt the uh, slider back up on there make my mark on where I need to drill a hole to put in another nut to weld in one more nut right up here for the slider and then we will deal with the box down in here check it out guys the pillar is completely done and I'm extremely happy with it I'm not looking forward to doing the driver's side but I now got all the uh, tack welds are grinded down I bolted up the uh, bottom portion of the seat belt unit in there I ended up having to trim more out so I ended up cutting along the whole seam line down here and then made my straight cuts to be able to fit the box in and then as you can see I used a couple pieces of one inch uh, flat strap and got these things welded up in here real nice but uh, before I got these welded in I uh, marked my spots where I needed to make the uh, hole and a uh, nut welded on the back side of both of these one for the uh, whole seat belt piece and uh, the uh, secondary one uh, for where the uh, other portion of the uh, seat belt bolts to the uh, chassis of the car and just like I was mentioning before now we got a good shot with the light here in the dark I was able to shave this piece out initially recreating you know the skin that the 9293 has got a uh, 12 millimeter nut welded up in here that I uh, had bolted the unit in to a uh, mark where I needed to drill and uh, weld this thing in at so initially all that's left at this moment is for me to uh, put the uh, A pillar B pillar cover on and uh, bolt all the uh, C belt on so you guys can see what the uh, whole finished uh, what this whole finished side looks like and then throughout the next week or two I'm gonna work on doing the uh, driver's side B pillar which should go a little bit quicker now that I've done the one side and I know exactly how I'm gonna need to cut everything on this side we made some pretty good progress on the uh, project CB over the last few weeks Danielle's got the uh, com the whole engine bay completely uh, sanded down and pretty much ready for us to uh, get primed and painted we got the engine fuse box is relocated back to the trunk and mounted in I'm really happy with the way that this uh, B pillar turned out for our seat belt on the uh, passenger side I mean to you guys probably looked like I knew exactly what it was I was doing but uh, honestly I was just kind of winging it uh, just based off of everything you know that I've learned over the years working at the salvage yards I knew that I was gonna have to drill out a bunch of tack welds and peel off these body panels and fit everything together and uh, it worked out great I'm really happy with the way it turned out uh, the driver's side shouldn't take me nearly as long now that I've done the one side and I'm gonna know exactly what I need to do to get that side done so I think that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. Do the whole YouTube deal. I'm Zach. This is Woodstocks. Till next time, guys. Peace out.